Hi, my name is Josh, and I watch the FCC approval database, so you don't have to. Today, we're looking at this uh, Westside Imports OY Low Power Transmitter. Generally speaking, low power transmitters are kind of fun, so let's get started. So instead of looking at the manual, I like to just jump straight to the internal photos because it makes it more of a fun mystery game. So here is the internal photos of this device. It's round. It's got a battery on the bottom and a button and not much else going on, some lights. Uh, that's a rechargeable battery. So we've got micro USB here for power, probably some battery charging stuff here and then a voltage regulator. And then let's look at the rest of this. So the first chip that we see here is this NRF uh, 8001. This is a Nordic semiconductor. This is a really common kind of Bluetooth chip. Nordic makes a lot of 2.4 gigahertz stuff, both Bluetooth, uh, Ant, and a few other things. Um, really easy to find the data sheet for this. And you can see the pinout. Kind of matches the package, so th this is it. That's definitely what's there. So it is just a Bluetooth device. It doesn't really have a, a proper microcontroller on it. So we look around, we see this right here. This looks like it's, that's the Freescale logo. And a little bit of poking around to figure this out. I'm pretty sure that it's a Canadus 4, a member of this KE04 subfamily of these things. Um, it is available in 24 pin QFN, which is what we've got there. Uh, if we go through and look, it seems to match up. Um, specifically, though, the interesting thing here is that it's a Cortex M0 Plus. It's got eight kilobits or eight kilobytes of flash and up to one kilobyte of RAM, um, and it's got a 12 channel ADC, which is pretty handy. So then we look a little bit closer to see what else is going on. Over here, we've got a serial EEPROM. And I can't quite figure out why it's there. Uh, and it's a tiny one, too. It's only 1K, if you look. It's the 95M01. And a little bit of Googling, and we find that that's actually the M9501. Uh, and it's the dash R part. And that 1 means that it's 1 kilobit. So 128 bytes of flash. Uh, and then the rest of the stuff, these look like voltage regulators, transistors, something. Uh, over here, we've got a big matching network for our antenna. And then just capacitors. These, oh, the other reason I think these are voltage regulators down here is they've got this distinctive two caps kind of thing going on. One on the input side, one on the output side. Then if we look closely, though, there's these other little things here. And these are teeny tiny little packages. And... You know, this one has these two capacitors stuck next to it. This one might have these attached. It's really hard to see the traces in this picture. And unfortunately, this is the only picture we've got. Uh, and then this one doesn't seem to have any capacitors, but it's surrounded by all these vias, so God knows where all of those traces turn up. Um, it looks like these are different parts, maybe, but they might all be the same kind of part. Um, in any case, when I see this, my first thought is that this is a 9-axis IMU, inertial measurement unit. This is a thing that's used in drones. I know about it because I used to send uh, hot air, or sorry, weather balloons up to the edge of space with payloads on them, and having a 9-axis IMU is really helpful. Those nine axes are a magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyroscopic sensor. What that is used for is the accelerometer tells you about motion forwards, backwards, up and down. The gyroscopic sensor tells you about rotation on those axes. And then the magnetometer tells you about your orientation in the Earth's magnetic field, or whatever your ambient magnetic field may be. Another device that we're going to talk about sometime soon uses a magnetometer to detect cars going over the top of it because that big chunk of steel moves the magnetic field around it. In any case, you've got these nine axes, three axes of acceleration, x, y, and z, three axes of rotation, about x, about y, and about z, and then three axes of magnetometer data, 
saying how strong the magnetic field is along x, along y, and along z. Having all three of those different kinds of sensors lets you stitch them together to tell a bit more about what your device is doing or what your product is doing. You can put it through a thing called a Kalman filter, for instance, to do a bit of cleanup of the data and get really clean data out. However, generally speaking, you want the three things to be in the same place, or at least as close as possible. And it seems like these are spread out. And there's also the other question of what are we doing with that? Like there's no real interface to the outside world other than Bluetooth. And this thing is tiny. We look here, it looks like it's three and a half centimeters across. That's just over an inch and a half. Actually, it's just under an inch and a half. It is a little tiny thing. That's a 2020 battery. So at this point, I kind of know what's on there, but I don't know why. So I go and um, actually look for West Side Discs online. I didn't actually look at the manual. I kind of forgot that it's there. Now if I go and look for West Side Discs, this is what you get. Uh, oh, the other thing, we notice it says Made in Finland right here. If we go back to this site, westside.fi, so this is a Finnish site. So these people make frisbees. Specifically, they make frisbee golf frisbees. So they've got drivers, mid-ranges, putters, accessories, etc. So now I'm curious. So I go and look at the manual, and it turns out that this is, in fact, a, a frisbee with telemetry. So what you do is you push that button on the bottom, and then you throw it, and it records 60 seconds of data of some sort, and then puts that into RAM, and whenever you walk up with your phone, it syncs up and then downloads the data into their app. Uh, that's a fascinating idea. Um, and so I immediately started thinking this is a, is a signals problem, because there's not a whole lot of RAM in this system, so how do you record 60 seconds of meaningful data about a frisbee throw in a kilobyte of RAM? And I still haven't quite figured that out. So maybe I've got the parts slightly wrong and there's more RAM, or maybe that flash is actually like a one megabit flash instead of a one kilobit flash. But it's an interesting question. So if you've got one kilobyte of RAM and you're storing 60 seconds of data, that gives you about 15 bytes per second to play with. And you've got nine degrees of freedom that you need to account for. Because no matter what those three different sensors are, they're all giving you three degrees of freedom each. So, I don't know. There are these little guys to account for here. It could be that these are, like two of these are accelerometers, they're analog accelerometers maybe, and these could be op amps that are doing some differencing or other sort of operation. But there's no resistors around. If you look, there's, there's really no resistors on this board. And if you wanted to do uh, an addition circuit there, you would need some resistors in that probably. So I don't think that's what those are. Uh, and also the silk on this is terrible. On the bottom, the silk screen looks very nice. It's, you know, nice and clean and everything is separated and visible. But up here on the top, <laughs> it's just a mess. Everything's on top of everything. And we can find the designators for some of these things. This is clearly an eagle board because it's U dollar sign, I think that's a nine, U dollar sign six, uh, U dollar sign five, I guess. You know, eh, lots of things in here. Uh, lots of caps on this board, but not very many resistors. So I, I don't think those are op amps. I think these are actual sensors, and they're all feeding into this Cortex M0, and that it somehow is logging this data. So the next natural thing to do is go look for research. And sure enough, if you Google Frisbee accelerometer, you get this by a uh, astronomer. So or at least somebody at an astronomy lab uh, measuring the flight dynamics on an instrumented frisbee. However, it is worth mentioning 
that this paper has not passed peer review. It was rejected by the referees. So maybe this isn't particularly good science. It seems to be okay though. And for our purposes, it's fine. So what uh, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Lorenz did here is he stuck a basic stamp and some accelerometers, two accelerometers, onto a Frisbee. I'll link this paper in below, but here's the important thing. Uh, he put together this little board. He's got two batteries. There's one accelerometer that's right in the center of the Frisbee. And then there's another one that's off to the side that spins in the actual Frisbee motion. Uh, he also notes that to minimize aerodynamic effects, he attached a fairing to his apparatus with tape. So this is specifically aerodynamically designed tape to smooth out the airflow so it doesn't disrupt the, the flight of the disc. So he did this and then collected data, and these are the actual data points from his accelerometers in this system. You expect to see a net acceleration of minus 1g, because we're in the Earth's gravitational field. And you see more or less that throughout this flight, so that's good. And we can see the disk actually spinning as it goes along. But note that this is one second. That looks like it's on the order of maybe 50 hertz. I think he gives it up above, but it's a lot more than 15 bytes a second worth of data here. So I can only conclude that this commercial product is doing something else to log its data. It may be doing some medians or some other stuff. I really don't know. It may be that it's only running a Kalman filter and generating the three positions in XYZ space so that it shows the trajectory of your disk as it goes along. In any case, I don't know exactly what it's doing, but here are some examples of how this whole system could look in the data. Uh, also, I'll note that this he's clearly an astronomer because he has immediately reached for GNU plot, which is why there's this very distinct sort of ugly for these plots. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so this is a fun paper to read. Um, but yeah, this is in fact an instrumented flying disc. And if we look at the, there's one last thing to look at, which is the actual picture. And it is the Westside Disc Destiny evaluation copy. So this is like a pre-release disc that they sent off for, for testing. Uh, if you Google this, you will not find it online. This doesn't exist yet, so this is kind of leaked a little bit, which is kind of neat. In any case, that's what this thing does. It's a pretty neat little circuit. Aside from the silk being a disaster on the top here, I like this design overall. I wish I knew what these did. Uh, also, I haven't found the antenna. I don't know exactly where the antenna goes. It's off over here somewhere-ish, and they didn't circle it, which is kind of unusual for this sort of submission. It may be on the back, because it's got this giant inductor down here. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for making it this far. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you see any questions down there that you feel confident in answering, please do. It's great to build up a dialogue within the community and, and help each other learn as we tear other people's designs apart. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon here on Virtual Teardowns.